Uh, our next uh, speaker, um, and, and again, I'm uh, very happy to uh, introduce you, uh, Jurgen Menze. I hope that I'm pronouncing the name uh, correctly. Inclusion Officer in the Gender Equality and Diversity ba Branch in the ILO. Uh, he will talk about peer-to-peer -peer support among companies, uh, global and national business and disability networks. And he will also introduce Susan Scott Parker, um, uh, and, uh, and, and I must just, uh, uh, I have to share that, uh, the reason we're here talking about employment is an amazing lunch that I had with Susan. Um, uh, she's always a great inspiration and specifically in that meeting, uh, we, 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 we spoke and, and decided that this will be the focus that we're going to open our 2023, uh, webinar series with. So thank you, um, uh, Susan for your great work and uh, uh, Jergen for uh, the amazing work of the ILO. Can't wait to hear you guys, so please. Thank you very much, uh, Michael. And uh, we're all keen to hear more from Susan, so I'll try to be short. <laughs> um, just a short self-description, I'm a middle-aged white man uh, having a beard and a headset. And unlike in other webinars, I'm wearing a white shirt, not a blue shirt. Um, look, I work at the International Labour Organization. It's a, a specialized agency of the United Nations for the world of work. And we, as ILO, we work, of course, also with trade unions. We work with governments on the employment of persons with disabilities. But I coordinate the ILO Global Business and Disability Network, which is, an, as the name suggests, a worldwide network of multinational enterprises working together to improve the employment rates of persons with disabilities in the private sector, becoming more inclusive companies and employing more people with disabilities around the world, especially in countries where the legal environment with infrastructure might not be very conducive. I'm not sure I had prepared some slides, but I'm okay to speak also without them. Um, so currently we have 36 multinational enterprises in our network. In addition to the multinational enterprises, we uh, have also 34 national business and disability networks. I'll say a little bit more about that in a minute. And also seven non-business non associate members, including the International Disability Alliance as a direct representation of people with disabilities in our network in general, but also in our steering committee. Now, why why does this network exist? I think we heard already uh, in the introductory remarks that more and more companies are more open to employing people with disabilities, but it is not a charity thing, right? The companies we work with, they understand it's not charity. It needs to benefit the bottom line. And uh, it's amazing. We had just the last week the CEO of Inditex, a big, uh, the big Spanish uh, fashion uh, company, the CEO came to Geneva to meet my big boss, the director general, to discuss disability inclusion issues. That's, I mean, the CEO just uh, dedicated meeting on disability with our um, head of the organization. And it was very clear. It was a very business-focused discussion, you know. They, they explained how it actually benefits their company because they, they want to be more diverse. They want to be more inclusive. They want to benefit from the ma very many ideas that exist in the company. And they can only benefit from, from, from that if they become more inclusive, if they can also include people with disabilities. And I think that is true. I mean, I'm mentioning Inditex because we just had the meeting uh, last week with the CEO. But this is, I think, true for any company we work with in the ILO Global Business and Disability Network. Because we cannot claim to work on diversity and inclusion if we still ignore people with disabilities. That 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 is clear. Now, how do we support companies to um, become better, so to say, in the inclusion of persons with disabilities? That's very much, as you said, Michael, a peer-to-peer -peer approach. So we bring companies together in webinars, similar to, to the one we are having right now, in conferences at global and regional level. We are just organizing another regional conference, this time for the Arab states. Last year, we had it for the Africa region. Uh, we also have and, and the, read, the, the, the conferences and the webinars are always public and they're available on our website, businessanddisability.org. And at the same time, we organize a B2B roundtable. So companies come to, only the companies come together in an exclusive space for once to discuss what's going well, but also to learn from lessons learned that other companies have had on their disability inclusion journey. 
And I like what Christopher said before. Look, we are all, all on a journey. You know, nobody knows it all. No, there's not an ideal, perfect organizational company. So that's the whole idea of the network to learn from each other, to inspire each other in areas where we might still be lagging behind. Now, um, that is happening at the global level. Now, we also know that multinational enterprises that are the company members of our global network, they, of course, operate around the world. And a lot of employment is not necessarily generated only in the head office, but at country level. And we, as UN organization, focus very much on developing countries or the global south, whatever terminology is, is used. And there we, we, we focus on national business and disability networks. We already heard from Christopher, the Business Disability Forum, the oldest one also created by Susan um, back in the 90s. Um, and this concept of national business and disability network is very similar to what we do at global level. So bringing companies together to learn from each other, also taking into account, of course, the national legislation, um, also ideally using the power of business to lobby government. And I think I saw a question in the chat, what can government do? And I think from a business angle, you can also use your power to lobby the government to implement or adopt more conducive legislation, because we still have very many countries where legislation exists that is, oh, sorry, sorry for my language, but horrible for the employment of persons with disabilities. So that is one thing. And of course, it's all about providing technical guidance to companies, um, because Many companies are willing, of course, we, we still hear, no, it's not enough, and it's still not enough, I would agree, but those companies that are willing to include and employ people with disabilities, they oftentimes simply struggle with, how do we take the first steps? How should we go about it? And we will hear more about that from Susan in a minute, because she was uh, our, um, what, 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 that, what did you call yourself, Susan, your lead, lead architect in the latest version of our self-assessment tool where companies can go and see what is actually still um, lacking for, for real inclusion and real meaningful employment of persons with disabilities. Now, I'll, I'll try to come to an end. Now, just to say, I said there are 34 of these national business and disability networks around the world. We as ILO and the ILO Global Business and Disability Network are constantly promoting these networks, establishing new networks with, for example, in Nepal, uh, Jordan and Kuwait. We're currently having uh, conversations with employers federations because we think employers federations are a good host for these national networks because, of course, they have the reputation in the business community. They have infrastructure. They can, um, they can really make, make these networks work. We also find some of these networks run by, by uh, non-business entities. And just to say that we have had, as Global Business and Disability Network over the last year, a very good, uh, a even stronger relationship with the UN Global Compact, which is also now getting into more and more into the disability business, so to say. And the local networks of the UN Global Compact also take more interest in establishing national business and disability networks. Um, now, I think... I will stop here. Um, a lot of what I said is on our web website, so please check out businessanddisability.org. One of the latest products, so to say, um, is the self-assessment tool, the latest version. It's, I think it's version 3.0, uh, in, in fact. And Susan was instrumental to put it on our agenda and actually also make it technically work. And I'm very grateful for, for her support on the tool and many other things. Uh, she's a strategic advisor to the ILO Global Business and Disability Network. And with it, I would like to pass it over to Susan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.